and welcome to Jay Coletti's Racket Reviews. My name is Jay Coletti and I will be your hostess. Today we are going to be discussing the Sicilian Mafia. The Sicilian Mafia is often referred to as La Cosa Nostra. Incorrectly. <laughs> La Cosa Nostra is a mistranslation of our thing. La Cosa Nostra literally means the our thing. Obviously this was a mistranslation. Cosa Nostra is the correct term for the Sicilian Mafia. Fun fact, the Sicilian Mafia, although the most famous, is one of only four main crime syndicates based in Italy today. The other three are the Camorra of Naples, the Drangheta of Calabria, and the Sacca Corona Unita of Puglia. But for now, Let's focus on the history of the most famous organized crime syndicate, the Sicilian Mafia, Cosa Nostra. The roots of the term mafia are often debated. The Sicilian adjective mafiusu roughly translates to swagger or boldness in English. However, since Sicily was so frequently occupied by other nations and was once even an Islamic emirate, many believe the term might have Arabic roots such as mafi, meaning exempted, or mahias, meaning aggressive boasting. You may have noticed boasting, boldness, swagger, these are all very similar and might even be what you think of when you think of the personality of a mafioso even today. However, author Selwyn Rayab contends that mafia is Sicilian Arabic slang, meaning protector against arrogance of the powerful. So that arrogance is still part of the word, maybe, but it's possible that it was not that the mafiosi themselves were swaggering, but that they were against the arrogance of the powerful. Food for thought. In his book, The Five Families, The Rise, Decline, and Resurgence of America's Most Powerful Mafia Empires, Rayab goes on to explain that the term really caught on in the 1860s, when a traveling play about Sicilian inmates maintaining their own justice system called I Mafiosi di Vicaria, or Heroes of the Penitentiary, became popular in Italy. So far, you might be tempted to think that the Cosa Nostra or Mafiosi are the good guys. They seem to be fighting the power, they're loyal countrymen who are stopping the foreign invaders from interfering with their way of life. Maybe you even identify with them. They were not as, it wasn't as this clear cut, let's put it that way. While that makes for great television, that's not really the reality. Cosa Nostra was created as a cash grab. Many mafia members and associates acted as gabalotti. We'll get into the meaning of that word in just a moment. But these Sicilian entrepreneurs leased farmland from the wealthy invading aristocrats who preferred to live in the metropolitan cities. So not too noble. Gabalotto is the singular form of gabalotti and derives from the Sicilian word gabella, meaning tax or duty in the form of a required payment. The gabalotti paid the aristocrat landowners for use of their property, which they subleased to soto gabalotti or sub lessees. The gabalotti would then hire guards, campieri, to protect livestock and more importantly, strong arm sub lessees into paying on time, extorting them for more, and keeping them in a kind of a quasi serfdom state. Eventually, the gabalotto would earn enough from doing this to actually overpower the original owner of the property in the first place. So this is how they came into power in Sicily. By the mid 1800s, these gabalotti were the bosses of the Sicilian countryside, using their money, land ownership, campieri, and influence to run the island their way. In 1861, during the unification of Italy, the Italian state was struggling to control the Sicilian island, which was mysterious in their ways and very skeptical of Italian rule. This secrecy is also the root of the Mafia's tradition of omerta, or code of silence and obedience to the Mafia leader. Etymologically, omerta is rooted in the Italian word umilta, or humility. Since the Italian state was so unfamiliar with the Sicilian governance, they turned to the most powerful men on the island, the Mafia, Cosa Nostra, for help with the Italian unification. 
the Italian state began dealing in favors and votes with the Mafia. By 1876, publicist and politician Leopoldo Franchetti described the Mafia as an industry of violence. Now working with the Italian state, the Mafia made the majority of their money by encouraging Italian entrepreneurs and traders to pay them a protection fee, or Piso. This Piso racket collected a fee from various businesses in exchange for letting them trade in peace. By the 20th century, many Sicilians sought a new life in the United States and would play a large role in the illegal immigration process, specifically during the mid 20th century, during the rise of Mussolini fascism. It's important to note that Mussolini hated the mafia. Fascism only works if you're the only boss in town. Mussolini was so determined to remove the mafia that he commissioned a prefect, the Iron Prefect, Cesare Mori, to get rid of the mafia by any means necessary. This resulted in the arrest and convictions of hundreds of mafiosi. For this reason, several mafiosi sought refuge in the United States. These mafiosi, however, did not leave their life of crime back in the old country. They continued to have a career in crime through extortion, racketeering, and of course, bootlegging. Many of these mafiosi who had escaped the Iron Prefect in Italy soon found themselves behind iron bars in the United States. These imprisoned mob bosses actually ended up being an asset to the United States Army in World War II. The U.S. needed men who could speak Italian to help them free Italy from Nazi control. Soon the U.S. intelligence offices were trading the mafiosi their freedom for military service and translation. The two most famous men to take the U.S. up on this deal were Charles Lucky Luciano and Vito Genovese. The U.S. military also utilized the Sicilian Mafia in Italy. This was a win-win for the Sicilian Mafia. The power of the U.S. Army was used to quash the Nazis and fascism, leaving the door open for them to once again seize political control over the area. After World War II, the Mafia's power continued to grow in the United States and Sicily. By the 1950s, the Sicilian and American branches of Cosa Nostra had begun working together in trailblazing the lucrative field of drug trafficking. The bosses of the Sicilian branch of the families were Tommaso Buschetta, Cesare Manzella, Giuseppe Genco Uso, Salvatore Greco, Gatino Badalamenti, and Angelo La Barbara. The bosses in the American families were Lucky Luciano, Joseph Bonanno, Carmen Galante, John Bonventri, and Santos Orji. I'll cover all of these men in their own separate videos. That does it for this episode, discussing the inception of the Sicilian Mafia and how they ended up coming to the United States. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click notifications to get more Mafia content sent directly to your sub box. Ciao.